Just we turn from our scheduled engagement, speaking engagement, with the uh, Kesi Masjid Mosque. Uh, the mosque, that community is uh, a community of mainly of Pakistani people from Pakistan, whose uh, native country is Pakistan. <clears throat> However, we found that there were members from American uh, community there too. Uh, Bilalians and some other few people from other races. And there were some distinguished guests there at that meeting from Pakistan and Egypt. Uh, Sheikh uh, Shalabi from uh, Egypt was there and another distinguished gentleman from uh, Pakis Pakistan who was also a sheikh, he was there. And uh, I was to address them on the life of Prophet Muhammad or any topic I should choose. So I did my best to accommodate them by addressing in general terms the life of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, and in specific terms, Prophet Muhammad as he is found in the Quran. So uh, I thought I would have been here earlier I expected to have been here before 2 o'clock. I had planned to arrive here before 2 o'clock. And now it's uh, <coughs> 20 minutes, minutes of 3, uh, 2.40 by that clock back there. So uh, I uh, will not be able to go into the full uh, talk uh, that I had planned to give you today. But however, <clears throat> since this is Easter, I thought it was a good occasion to address this idea before the Muslims. Uh, is there any uh, non-Muslims here today, which we know that's impossible because you're Muslims by nature. But just in case, there are some who are non-Muslims in their mind, uh, then please bear with us and please don't think that we have any desire to belittle or ridicule the Christian religion. <clears throat> Every religion has its holidays. The Jewish people, they have the holidays. The Muslims, we have our holidays. The Christians, they have their holidays. <clears throat> Every people have their holidays. And <clears throat> the Christian holidays are called sacred days, holidays. And the Muslim uh, holidays are called Eid. Eid. And uh, the expression blessed is usually uh, connected with the expression Eid. So <coughs> we refer to the days as blessed, blessed days, a blessed Eid. And the Eid, the word Eid, <coughs> the word Eid indicates celebration, a happy occasion of celebration, but in its root or in its expressed meaning, a literal, literally, literal meaning or expressed meaning, it means something that returns, something that is, re is repeating all the time, reoccurring. Uh, it means to happen at regular intervals, e, something that is occurring at a regular, regular interval. So the Eid, we know, is, it occurs yearly, every year, at regular interval, intervals, on the same time in the calendar, the Eid, our Eid. And we can't change that. We can't have the Eid of Ramadan on the second week or the third week. We have to have it as it occurs in the calendar. But you notice the Christians, they can adjust the things. Sometimes Easter may fall one time, and 
another time, another time. And I often wonder how come the, the holidays can be changed like that. And then I learned that <clears throat> actually there is some other symbolism connected with it. And uh, all the time the symbolism is not right for it to occur on a certain time we expect it to occur on. So they have to make an adjustment. Uh, the, uh, e the Easter falls on the Sunday after the 21st of March, but after also the full moon. The moon has to be full, after the full moon, see? So um, I don't know if uh, all the nations, the Christian nations, observe this as strictly as uh, some of them, but uh, this, is the, this is the method that they use for <clears throat> calculating the specific time for the Easter. And Easter is always on Sunday. Now we know that if it's strictly by the calendar, it won't always be on Sunday. So it's not strictly by the calendar, it's not so much the days, it's the moon. It's the moon and it's spring. The equinox, the spring equinox. So it has to be after the spring equinox and after the full moon. Now, let us let that rest in the mind right there, okay? Let us look at something else. You have to get all the pieces together, then you see the whole thing. <clears throat> in this Easter, there is the idea of new life, new birth, but also abundant growth, abundant life. How do we know that? Because the rabbit has become also a symbol in the Easter celebration. And eggs. Right? Chicken eggs and rabbit. Why? Because chicken lays a lot of eggs. Chicken is a great egg layer. And the rabbit is a great multiplier. Rabbits multiply very fast, very fast. All right, so I think we can now see more of the picture. For Easter, the meaning is new life and also multiplied life, right? Increased life, multiplied life. But also, there is, uh, in the very word Easter, the word East. E-A-S-T, you know, and if we just took that literally, Easter, it would be referring to the East, right? All right, now, <clears throat> if you should do some research on the word, you will find that it's related to the dawn, the dawn, and we know the day dawns in the East, and it darkens in the West. Right? So uh, we can now see an association between a new life and a new dawn. A new life and a new dawn. So it's a new life, spring, a new spring, and it's a new dawn. So here we have material increase, renew, renewedness, renewing of material things, uh, and also a renewing of something else that's... Um, identified in a dawning, dawn, a dawning, right? So we, we come to the conclusion then that it's talking about not only material renewal, but it's talking also about mental or intellectual renewal. So here the Christians have in this Easter uh, a language and a description that we see also in Islamic terminology. In what way? Prophet Muhammad said at the head of every century there will be what? A revival of the faith. Is that right? A revival of the faith. A newness of the faith. 
<coughs> with this revival and new renew newness of the faith comes what? Better understanding, a new dawning of understanding, the brightness comes back again. And with that brightness of the intellect, we expect a brightness of material growth too. Because if, if the intellect is revived, then the intellect will be strong enough to deal with the, uh, I would say, stagnation of the material world. Is that right? Yes, because if once our minds become stagnant, the whole society becomes stagnant. And it takes a revival of the mind in order to revive the material uh, machinery, the material operations, you see. So <laughs> we can see then a, 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 a comparison between Easter and the idea of revival in Al-Islam. But the revival in Al-Islam has not to do with these foreign and mythological deities. There has been <coughs> discussion made of these holidays by Christians and they have pointed out the fact that most of our holidays have pagan connections. I'm talking about Christian holidays. That most of the Christian holidays have pagan connections. It's act, it is not actually a, a, a Christian creation it's a pagan, a pagan creation with a Christian usage. This is what they say. This is what they say. All right. <clears throat> Let's see, how come this idea has to be in Christianity? Chicken laying eggs and rabbits. And the word Easter. Some have associated Easter, have connected Easter also with the pagan god Esther. Whether that is correct or not, we're not sure. But one thing we are positively sure of, that is that Easter has a connection with East and the dawning of light in the morning. We're positive sure of that. And we are also positive that the, the rabbit and the, uh, the egg refers to birth, new birth, but with the intent of multiplying, having abundance. The Bible talks about the, full, fill, the, the, the fullness, pardon me, of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles. Now, what does this mean, fullness of the Gentiles? It means getting the most out of a people who are called Gentiles. Getting the most out of them by some strategy. There's some strategy for getting the most out of them. So some strategy, some scheme is in operation to get the most out of a people. If you have read the Bible, you students of the Bible, if you have read the Bible, I'm sure that if, especially over these years that I've been a man, I'm sure you are aware that the fullness of the Gentile is also tied in with the conclusion of the Gentile. When the fullness of the Gentiles come, that's the end of the Gentile, as a ruling people, and the beginning of a new order under a new kingdom, new people, new kingdom. Easter fits right in with that scheme <clears throat> because it's talking about multiplying, multiplying two things. One is the mind and the other is the material goods. The mind and the material goods.
The chicken we find also mentioned in the Bible. So the chicken might be a legitimate symbol because the chicken is mentioned in the Bible. Jesus said before the cock or rooster crows three times, you would have betrayed me. So we find that in their language of the Bible, because Bibles are not the same everywhere, but in the Gentiles Bible, we find that the rooster, the chicken, has a real place there. He must have a special place there. So the chicken associated eggs in the Easter, we can understand that. It can be accepted as a legitimate association. But what about rabbit? I didn't find a rabbit mentioned nowhere in scripture. You see? Not rabbit, not rabbit, I find rabbi. But not rabbit. So how not a rabbit become associated with the egg? This tells us that it was a chicken, now it's a rabbit. It used to be a chicken, now it's a rabbit. To keep the to keep the the, the, the language connected so we don't lose the connection with the old language, the eggs are kept and the rabbit is there. So actually if if they if they could have, they would have had no eggs in Easter. There would have been only rabbits. But since the eggs are connected with the idea for which the rabbit has now become the symbol, the eggs have to be included with the rabbit. Now, what is the rabbit? The rabbit is a sheepish animal, a doe-like animal. They all have similar, similar attributes, similar characters. The, the sheep is meek and humble and sweet. The doe or the deer is meek and humble and sweet. The rabbit, meek and humble and sweet. Those are not vicious animals. Sheep, doe, a deer, and rabbit. You can see, those are meat animals, little pets, nice, sweet creatures. I think they say their meat is sweet, don't they? The, the sheep, and the deer, and the rabbit all have sweet meat. They call it sweet meat. Yeah. All right. Then the multiplying, the multiplying there is the multiplying of a rabbit like people. It's the multiplying of a rabbit like people. See, the rabbit got a lot of get up and go power, but no staying power. Is that right? Some of you know rabbits. They got a lot of get up and go power. A rabbit can jump up, man, and get away right now. But you get on his trail and you'll find that he can't last very long at that speed. His speed soon starts wearing down start clocking down and after a while you can catch him right yeah so the rabbit got a whole lot of get up and go power he can get up and just get going right away he has no heart he's no fighter rabbit ain't gonna fight rabbit gonna run and a rabbit he doesn't like the open he doesn't like the, the open he comes out in the open when he has to but he feels more safer in um, what the story called the brow patch, right? Where there's a lot of things to hide behind. He's happy when he's in a place, in a situation that hides him. He ain't happy when he's in the open. The situation that hides him is his happiness. That's his happy habitat. Now, if that ain't the mind behind the schemes of Western society, tell me who that is. Who it is? No courage, no real courage. If they had real courage, they wouldn't hide so much. And if they had real courage, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be. Uh, they, they, they wouldn't have that quick get up and go power without staying power. So you can get up and go. You don't take much for that. But to have staying power, you have to be brave. I mean, even for a jogger. The jogger, he starts jogging. After a while, his chest starts burning. You know, 
He saw his suffering. Now, if he ain't got no carriage, he's going to start slowing down and stop. Now, you know, I hate to tie these things in, but you know, most of our people ain't no long distance runners. Oh, they can rent a short race right now. But they ain't got no staying power. Huh? They have filtered over into us some kind of way. We're talking about the rabbit society. Now, rabbits, uh, they come in different colors, but the popular Easter rabbit is white. Yeah. Means innocent. Innocent. White indicates innocent. But there's another meaning that's much older that the average uh, student of Christian religion and theology, esotericism, they don't know. That meaning is happiness. White meant happiness long before it meant innocence and purity. Why did they use white to mean happiness? Because white was synonymous almost with light. With light. And light brings spirit to people. You see? When light come on, it brings spirit to you. That's why most of these restaurants that don't serve liquor, they like to have bright light. Those that serve liquor, they would like to have it dark. Why? Because light activates the mind. You see? Light makes you happy, it cheers you up, and it activates the mind. So light, light is compatible with a happy spirit. But that doesn't serve liquor. That doesn't sell liquor. No happy spirit ser sells liquor. The spirit that sells liquor is the one that turned the light out. See, people don't want liquor with lights on. And people don't want liquor because they're happy. <laughs> people want liquor to get happy. Yeah, they want liquor to get happy. Not because they're happy. They want to get happy. So, uh, uh, they have light in ancient language, meaning happiness, cheerfulness. You know, in the sun, they used to have the sun in symbolism, smiling. The sun with a big, bright smile, because it meant cheerfulness, happiness. So that rabbit, who is the son of the rabbi, see, he's not a rabbi, he's a rabbit. He was bit by the rabbi. You see? Yeah. So the son of the, of the rabbi, who is the rabbit, he ain't got no stand power. He ain't got no stand power. And he ain't got no heart. Because you need knowledge to have heart. <laughs> I hope you all understand this. I'm telling you, it's good to me. You need knowledge to have heart. You know, you can have a good fighter. Put that fight, I used to be a boxer, put that fighter in the ring, but if you haven't given him knowledge plus skill, if he runs into trouble, he's going to most likely lose that fight. But if you've given him knowledge plus skill, oh no, he may know that he's about to lose the fight, but his knowledge will make him stay in there because he figured if I can work this, I can get over. If I can just work this, I have a chance. You see? So his knowledge keeps him in the vault. Whereas the person who just have muscle and power and no knowledge, he gets in there and as soon as he gets a few hard blows to his head and he can't land his, he gives up. He becomes totally frustrated. <laughs> and he gives up. Whereas the other man start thinking, he start remembering the knowledge. And he starts thinking, what did I do wrong? What am I doing wrong? What is he doing? How can I counter that? So he began to work with knowledge and he ends up standing there for 15 rounds maybe. Uh, maybe we end up, end up winning the ball, you see? So it takes knowledge. Brothers and sisters, this society was painted as a rabbit society long before it was ever made Christian. We got pictures from the etchings of stone showing that somebody depicted Western man 
as a rabbit. They have a rabbit on skis before skis were ever invented. <laughs> so obviously, the idea of somebody sliding on ice with skis was in the mind before they even made the actual thing. And they have the Caucasian as a rabbit on skis. Just going like the Dickens on skis. Flying on ice on skis. Alright. You know, this is this is for the this is for those who are looking for understanding. Now, do we want to make the connection? Let's see if this is a fact. W.F. Muhammad, who set this community up before it was changed, he called the church the Ice House. Now, let us see, if anybody else call it Ice House? Whoever made the movie Superman, the new Superman, they had him in a heavenly home that was all crystal like ice. Whole planet, nothing but a planet of crystal like ice. And they called him up in his heavenly home, Khalil, an Arabic name now they gave him, so no Christian would understand what they were saying. They called him, now you can see the movie to verify this. Please give me one here. Keep one on, keep one suspicious and give me one. You know, I feel I'm wasting my time sometimes. They're not hearing, they're not following because they're so suspicious. Well, you can verify this by seeing the movie. Okay, they called him Khalil. Now, uh, dear people, why the rabbit get tired because he's depending on his own energy. But let's put him on speed. So he won't have to depend on his own energy. He will ride on ice power. <laughs> We're going to reduce the friction. Reduce the, 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 the tension and the friction. So he won't feel the strain on himself. The ice will take the burden. What is the ice? This fantasy land, fantasy land religion that they teach the common people in church, that's the ice. You try to stand on that. You better be careful. Now you know Jesus stood on the water. You see, Jesus stood on the water. Well, they can't make nobody stand on the water, so they can't say, we're going to have to use ice. But we want it to be risky still. Jesus didn't want to stand on the water. He was just showing people he could stand on the water. He wanted to bring people from the water to land. Because he said to the fishermen, come and follow me. Come away from the fishing business in the water. Come and follow me to the land. That's what he told the disciples according to the Bible. So Jesus actually didn't prefer no water standing for his people. But just to show them that if I was a water man, I could handle it, he stood on the water. All right? Okay. So now, you know, simple faith without knowledge is a risky business. It's like standing on the lake. <laughs> you can only do it for a split second and you go, then you're going to have to start swimming. <laughs> so that's a pretty risky business. You have, to have to, you have to have a boat for people out there. And a boat is a tricky apparatus. You have to know how to operate that thing. And it's risky too. It's subject to get a leak or a puncture. It's risky business too. Or the wind blow it off course. And that's usually what happens. They get blown off course, right? <laughs> All right. Oh, they don't know no wind come and they have to sit out at sea. And sometimes starve to death at sea because the wind didn't blow. <laughs> so, so they weren't gonna stand for no business like that. So they say, well, since we ain't gonna give them land, let's give them ice. Then uh, with ice, the Gentile can have some sand power. Because all he has to do is hit it every now and then. 
We give him ice and some ski. The two worlds. A spinning wheel on one, on one. A product and a spinning wheel on the other one. Representing the two worlds. So anytime he want to put more emphasis on the spiritual world, he can do it. On his skis, he just put more emphasis on the spiritual world. And he just make all kind of movements. And he want to hit the, spiritual, the physical world, he hit the spiritual world and make a real, real good figure. He become a figure, skier. <laughs> so, so they had got a plan together to put the Gentile world on skis and make him an expert ski, a figure skier. Yeah, figure skier. Mm -hmm. And that's how the world operates. <clears throat> now, the rabbit, now, his hind legs are much more developed than his front legs. He got long hind legs and strong hind legs. That's how come he can get up and go so fast. He take those powerful long hind legs and he hit it and it shoot him out like a grasshopper. You know, a grasshopper, he can get up and go too because his hind legs are so powerful. The grasshopper, you, you see him creeping along there and if you've never seen one before, you think you can catch him with no problem. You go to reach and grab that sucker and he turn on the back power. He hit the hind rockers and he's gone, right? Boom, he's gone. Well, the rabbit got the hind power too. Now, if you observe pups, we have dogs and the dog have pups. The first legs that the pup can use is the front leg. Front leg. The pup is dragging his hind around first. But after a while, his hind legs develop. And his hind legs become stronger than his front legs. And the dog, though his hind legs are not pronounced like the rabbit's hind legs are, the dog too has power in his hind legs. When he get ready to run, he's pushing him, he's throwing his body almost in air with the force of his hind legs, right? And the front legs are just grabbing. They have an animal they call the cheetah. The cheetah has such strong, such powerful hind legs that the cheetah can make a wheel of his body. When he's running, he actually makes a wheel out of his body. He, he, his body becomes almost a circle. And his hind legs are hitting the, hitting the earth, throwing him forward, and the front legs are doing nothing but just barely touching it. Barely touching it. And coming back, putting his body in position where he can stretch out again to hit the earth with those hind legs. His hind legs go way up past his front legs. His front legs be behind his, his hind legs. His hind legs be in front of his body. And when he hit the earth, he hit, hit it way up there, and he does that. And that just jet him out forward. And they say he's about the fastest runner on earth. Now I expect if the, if the rabbit can exist for another hundred years or so, that pretty soon we're going to have the cheetah as a symbol in the Easter celebration. Yeah, because I think already we're there. Because uh, the, the rabbit society is no more rabbit. You know, a rabbit is only dangerous when he get rabies. But I think it's a cheetah society. Still a pet. You know, the cheetah makes good pets. Cheetah makes a very nice pet, but he can be vicious too. You see? So that's more like what we have now. <laughs> so, so they might update the symbolism one day. Yes.
rabbit foot as good luck, right? You remember that? A rabbit foot is good luck. Why is a rabbit foot good luck? Because the rabbit foot is symbolic of the um, get up and go power of the Gentile world. So if you can ever get the Gentile world and use that get up and go power in them, you got a lucky piece. You ain't got to worry about anything anymore. Situations will work out fine for you. You got it made. The good luck piece, you know it never works. No rabbit foot never works. Not that rabbit foot. But if you can harness the get up and go power of a Gentile mentality, that'll work. Yeah, that'll work. So they came and they, they planted in the Gentile's mind this idea of bringing everything out. Discovering everything. The new destiny. The divine destiny. We're going to discover everything. They say Columbus discovered the new world. Why? Why they say that Columbus discovered the new world? Because this is a trip of discovering. Columbus didn't discover no new world. The Africans, the Irish, and the Arabs had visited this part of the hemisphere before Columbus came here. <laughs> and maybe others that we don't know anything about. So it wasn't the first time. No, they had been over here before. This had been found before. They had ran into this part of the world before. But it had to be a new discovery. Later on they brought it out, you know, that uh, Leif Erikson, yeah, Leif Erikson, uh, a Viking, a Viking, that they had brought a ship over here long before Columbus. I mean, that's part of American history now. That's part of high school or college education now. Yeah. How long? Yes, 451 years before Columbus came. All right? And we find African heads in uh, South America, big African stone heads, and other things that uh, are evidence that Africans were here too, long, long time ago. Also, there are proof that people from the islands of the Pacific came here also. In fact, they can, they can document them coming here better than they can document Lake Erickson coming here. But Lake Erickson got blonde hair. He's a Caucasian. <laughs> they ain't interested in documenting that your ancestors came here. Uh, no other race, though. They're interested in documenting that they, their ancestors came here, you see? So that's the problem. It's not that they can't get evidence. They have more evidence that your fathers came here and they have that their fathers came here. But they have proven that their fathers came here, Lake Eric. Okay. Now, if there is a plan, a, a scheme, to harness the get-up-and-go power of the Gentile world, and you are in the Gentile world. If that's the plan for the Gentile world, then how can you doubt that you are not under that plan? If it's a national plan or international plan for the Gentile world, you are also a subject of that plan. What, is, what, what, what are we talking about? We are talking about human behavior. We are talking about the weaknesses and strengths of human behavior. Exploring the weaknesses and strengths of human behavior. Exploring the weaknesses of human behavior and harnessing the strengths of human behavior. Using that strength to promote material production, to advance knowledge and civilization. Making cannon fodder of a whole hemisphere of people. Now some of you say, oh, that sounds far-fetched. Oh, that sounds so far-fetched, brother Imam. That is the naked truth. That is the naked truth. The worst form of slavery is so-called democracy. I'm not speaking in specifics 
I'm speaking in general terms. Generally speaking, the worst form of slavery is so-called Western democracy. We know when it comes to certain aspects of human life, communism, monarchies, are worse. All right? But where will you find the havoc, the, the, the destruction raked into the lives of the people as it is raked into the lives of the people of the Western Hemisphere? Where will you find people as humanly degraded on this earth as they are in so-called civilized democracies of the Western world? You'll find a human being maybe being whipped by his master right on the street. His master may whip him with a stick. But is that worse than finding a scientific avenue into your human behavior and re-clocking your human sensitivities, your human makeup, your appetites, your responses to stimuli so that you behave like a drooling, drunken idiot and think you are sane? Huh? Tell me, which one is worse? To beat a man with a physical stick in a land and make him obey me and go to work, get to work. Hey, did you bring all the money you didn't? Whip him with a stick. Which is worse? To do that or to find a secret scientific avenue into his genetic, into his genetic mechanism where I experiment with his genetic mechanism and turn the, the, the factors of his human behavior into uh, my own instrument where I can make him happy today, sad tomorrow. Make him cry this moment, laugh the next. Make him walk on all fours today, stand up like a man tomorrow. I don't like to say these things to you, but some things need to be brought naked and plain to shock your mind. Make him get on his hands and knees for women. And then 10 years later, stand him up and have him frowning on that. No! No! That's no. Get the ball! And then bring the, bring the, 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 the factors to working in the environment to influence his mind and his thinking so that over a period of 10 years or more or less, the thing that he said was despicable and beneath his human dignity is now his uh, Sunday or Christmas dinner. I'm talking about the fact of this world's life. So which is worse? Tell me which is worse. Driving people as cattle in physical slavery, telling them get up out of your bed, go to work, hit the fields, go to work. And leaving them like that, like brute beasts out there, or going into their genetic behavior and experimenting with it so that I make him any animal, any creature I want to make him to suit my situation. Which is worse. I say the one that experiments on my genetic mechanism by bypassing my conscience is a worse sinner than the one who put me in physical slavery and beat me and treated me like a boy. That's what you all have to realize. You have to realize that there are two sides to this evil that we talk about in the Western Hemisphere. There's the physical side and there's the hidden side. The hidden side is much worse than the physical side. Now, is it a shame that they would use their holiday and the things brought into this holiday as key words, key symbols, key signs to connect for them the ideas in the scheme. So you buying a rabbit, a chocolate rabbit, for your, for your child, and uh, you know you're innocent. You bringing home a nice little sweet chocolate rabbit, you know? And everybody eating rabbit, and they're, and they're duck your decorating eggs. All of this is nothing but innocent fun for you. But in the language of the ones who designed this thing, 
is a language for your mental, spiritual, and social enslavement. Key language, code language in your enslavement, in the program for your enslavement. So if I know this as a Muslim, can I tell you that it's all right to be Christian? I would be a traitor. Can I tell you it's all right to be Christian? No, I would be a traitor. Knowing this, having this knowledge of how the Christian masses are made a helpless subject of manipulative government. When I say manipulative government, I'm not talking about president. Look, I don't want to live under a world like that. I don't want my children living under a world like that. Anyone that I have love for, I don't want them living under a world like that. What is the escape? How can we escape that, brother Imam? Follow leadership in your own community. Be Muslim. Be Muslim. And ex uh, 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 accept to be cautious in this environment that we live in. Don't go out there and take this society for granted. Don't go out there just like this is a safe democracy. This is an unsafe democracy. Very perilous place. Very dangerous, dangerous, risky place to be living in. Your daughter can be sane the day and next week totally out of her mind. And I don't mean mentally sick. In their uh, chemical definition or in their psychological terminology but yet mentally sick. Yes! Your child can be healthy minded today and just tomorrow be a different child altogether. Gone crazy. You don't even recognize your own child. Your son that was dignified and respectable looked like he was going to be a, a, a progressive young man. Suddenly, in a few weeks, associating with the wrong people or giving himself to the wrong cultural uh, influences, become overnight a stranger to his parents. Isn't this a fact? And we, who do we blame? The world. Who is, who is running the world? The world ain't running itself. We blame the world. Yes, but you know you can't help that nowadays. You know how the world is. Yeah, I've been knowing how the world is. But thanks to God Almighty, now I know how the people who run the world, I know how they are. And that's what you have to realize, that this thing is no accident. Look, we're talking on Easter, but we're talking on Easter for the purpose of getting you to see the main instrument that they use to keep the world under their feet. The main instrument that they use is this it power in us. The it power in us. The rabbit hind legs represents his it power. I told you about the pup who starts dragging himself with his front legs. That's his conscience. His conscience is trying to pull himself. But since God hasn't given him a free conscience, he can't make make out that way. Pretty soon he gives up pulling himself that way and his dormant mind, a dormant conscience, dormant nature, comes and takes over his conscious life. The conscious life of the dog is taken over by his hereditary life, which is symbolic of, uh, of the, the hind end. Just to quickly get you to see this. They say the man's conscious thoughts are up here. The man's <laughs> the hind of the animal. I'm just giving you a lot to help you to believe because I want you to save yourself. And if you will understand, once our people accept what I say of this world scheme, 
You can't be stupid anymore. Ain't no way you can be stupid anymore. And if I am successful in getting you to see this alone, I think I would have done a great service to our people. Yes. All right. So, dear people, this world is a world that doesn't trust the common man's mind. They don't think the world is safe with the common person's mind being free. So their program is to enslave the common person's mind so that they never have to fear the world being taken over by the common man. That's the pure truth, naked truth, fat, holy, sacred, as pure as anything you ever heard. I'm telling you the actual plain naked truth. It is as true as anything existing in this world. Yes, that's their attitude. Now, they have sold us this idea of freedom and democracy. But when we study our history and life in this so-called freedom and democracy, we find that at certain periods of time in our so-called progression, we become more regressive, more primitive, more savage, more inhuman than we were even at, at the times in our life before the democracy. Yes! There are times in American history when the mentality of America became more destructive, more primitive, more violent, more primitive, more backward than it was at times before the so-called Christian awakening. So we heard what they've told us of ancient Rome. Yes, we've heard about that. But given the limit of their knowledge at that time, I think they behaved more civilized than ancient, ancient Rome than those people behaved who put you and my forefathers in slavery and had sport with our lives. Cruel sport with our lives. I think those people before Christianity were more civilized given the knowledge that they had than these Christians who meted out to us the savage cruelty that they meted out as Christian people. Yes! What is responsible for this? There must be something responsible for this. All right, we say, okay, it's the savage past of the people. Yes, many of them came from jails. They were, they were criminals. They were, they, they were already deranged before they got here. Yes, and then when they came here, they kept, kept breeding among themselves. Nobody else would breed with them. They kept breeding deranged people. But what about these so-called dignified? What about these so-called rawless? Who also kept quiet while they did that. They were a quiet partner in the cruelty. What about them? What about those so-called dignified, so-called educated Christians? Upright, cultured Christians who went and got Bible and twisted the New Testament to support them putting us in that kind of condition. Huh? The evidence of it is still around. There are churches in South Africa right now who's demanding that apartheid stay the rule in Africa. In fact, the church is the leadership. They're out in front asking that they keep apartheid. All right? What is the explanation? The only explanation is this, that, there, that some, some society has found a way, either by direct approach or by indirect remote control, they have found a way to reach the genetic apparatus of the Gentile people, as they are called, and have bypassed their intelligence and have them moving not on intelligence, but on blind impulses, which is the uh, uh, characteristic of the emotional makeup of the human being, have them moving on blind impulses, and they are not using their intellect. That's the only, re the only explanation. Because we know all these people are not wicked. 
We know they're not wicked. They're good people. But their logic is wicked. Their logic is wicked. Now, to, to, to put the man on his hind leg, you know, the, the human being walk on his hind legs anyway, don't we? We walk on our hind legs. But, excuse me, but we make a world with these hands. We don't make a world with our feet. We make a world with these hands. But the feet support us and we walk upon our feet. All right. When we want to go faster, do we run? The primitive man runs. The civilized man get on a horse. Get on a camel. Make an automobile. So actually, he goes faster by using what? His intelligence. He doesn't depend upon his inherent power <laughs> to go faster. He depends upon his intelligence for faster movement. He uses intelligence to get on an animal that can outrun him. And that, uh, that uh, stimulation in his mind finally led him to making a, a vehicle that could carry him even faster than that. The fastest animal is that cheetah, cheetah we mentioned earlier. They say he can go 70 miles an hour. But the man made an automobile to go 150, 160 miles an hour. Right? Even faster, they tell me some of them now. See? Yes. So the, the man, he goes faster because of his intellect. And his hands carry out the will of his intellect. So they're precious too. Now this animal that, uh, that uses his hind, and he depends upon the hind, for escape, for speed, for this and that. That's characterizing the masses of stupid people in the society. To get them to use that kind of power, you have to bypass the intellect. How do you bypass the intellect? You bypass the intellect by, 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 by creating in them a response that can dominate every other response. You have to create in them a sensitivity and a response that dominates every other sensitivity and every other response. I'm going to give you some examples of what I'm talking about. And I hope a brother that I know, a friend, I don't see him here, but I hope he's here today because I know he, he enjoys this kind of talk. Uh, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Certain incidents in your life you associate with happiness or sadness, some mood, is that right? You can be sad, but if somebody mentioned that incident in your life with a happy impulse stronger than your sad impulse, it will almost overcome your sadness at that moment, right? So we can mention that happy incident while you're in your sad moment and you'll stop crying and start laughing. Right? Or that funny incident, whatever, happy and funny. We can mention it and the person who was just this second crying will start laughing. Now, the same, the same principle is used to rule the mind of masses. Let me see if I bring you some other example or illustration. Haven't you had a pet, a dog or something? And the dog looked very sad, be in a bad mood, sad mood. And you call its name and it perk up right away. Why? Because he associates his name with happy incidents. You usually call him by his name when you're going to feed him, when you're going to play with him. Right? So he associates his name with happy, happiness in his life. So if you say, whatever his name might be, Chick or Rex or whatever his name might be, right away he perk up. His tail star wagon? Yeah. Tail star wagon, he, he just gets happy. So you made him happy by merely calling his name. 
Do you think he got happy because he loved you? See, the, the, the person that can't see the scientific side of this thing, they will think the dog got happy because the dog loved me. No, the dog got happy because the dog remember eating when you say Rex. The dog remember you petting him when you say Rex. Hey Rex! Rex run over there. How you doing boy? How you doing boy? How you doing boy? Come here Rex! Drop a big can of dog food or steak or something down there. Rex no, Rex means happiness to Rex. Yeah. So you say, you, you say, come here Rex. You say, Rex. Rex fan. Rex just droopy. Rex that turned out to be droopy. So you say, hey Rex. <laughs> Rex get just a happy. Now, if, say if we were the type of wicked people that would do something like this. And we would create a song with a beat designed to reach the greatest, the maximum number, number of people that like music. And we would make that the hit tune. And we would play that tune, it would be a hit tune for a solid year. Hit tune for two years. Popular for five years. Don't you know some of these things are popular for five and ten years? Yes. Okay. And this has dominated you, okay? All right, later on, we, we bring another tune. This, this tune is put on the shelf. We bring another tune. All right. You're sad, and nothing we play will make you happy. You're sad now, you're in a bad mood. You're about to get ready to become unruly and make trouble for society. And ain't nothing we can play will bring you out of that. We bring uh, CD1. Everybody, and we have them get out there, play, 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 push him, push him. He's good. He's got good vibes. Push him, and none of them will get you out of that mood. We said, okay, we got to go back to the id. Let's go get the rabbit foot. See, what was that tune that had them ten years ago? Oh yeah, we know we got it. You think they'll remember? Oh, sure, it was so popular. Most of the people, a lot of the old people, all the old people, a lot of even the middle, they will remember that. Okay, I want not that song, but that beat. You don't need nothing but that beat. Don't need that song. So they play that same beat. And all of a sudden, the whole society get happy. Everybody's in mood. Hey, baby, what's happening, man? Say, hey, baby, what you doing? You forsaking the revolution? What, man? Revolution? No, man, no, man. <laughs> the mind has been taken from the mood that it was in, no matter what it was. Might have been political factors causing the mood or whatever it was. Economic factors might have been causing mood, no matter what it was. If you can go back to the thing that once dominated the, the, the person. The, 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 the rhythm responses have been written into your genetic mechanism. And all they have to do is play it again, not so your ear hears it, so your ear hears it. Well, the ear, that's just a term. So your genetic being hears it. When your genetic being hears it, your genetic being is going to respond. So all of a sudden now, a people who wouldn't respond to nothing that would cheer them up are responding and they're cheered up. They're so happy now to get out of the old mood. See, they didn't want to be in that mood. Who likes misery? Nobody likes misery. So they are so thankful now to be out of that old depression, that old depression, that old mood of depression. Oh, that they give their whole life to this new beat. This new beat. Everybody. You say, I never thought grandmama would do that. Grandmama out there, 80 years old. Pop, 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 pop. Hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby, hey, baby. Yeah. You never, I say, you, some of the children had to put their hand over their eyes. I never thought grandmama would do that. But grandmama, she's so happy too. 
to be out of the depressive mood that she's giving in to the rhythm too. She gets in the beat too, and she's just happy. And he said, Grandma, I never thought you would do that. And Grandma said, say, well, it's just fun. It ain't no harm in it. It's just fun. Just having a good time. What's wrong with having a good time? You remember that record they say, don't blame it on the moonlight. Don't blame it on the sunshine. Don't blame it on the good time. They say blame it on the boogie. Why? And I told you at that time, and I gave the talk right here, I say, check it out. I guarantee you, Stevie Wonder did not write that. Some of our people checked it out and verified it. He didn't write it. They brought the jacket and they showed. But that was the only number on that LP that he didn't write. The only one. Is that an accident? No, it's no accident. It means your imam is on to the goodies. Yes. 